I want now to go on to what happens inside the brain. The brain is a fascinating organ. It has a hundred billion nerve cells in it. At the last count, there's a little man sitting there, just got one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> oh, one, two. <laughs> and we've revised our estimates. Some people say that it's about 10 billion, some people say it's about 30 billion, but I think most authorities at the moment seem to say about 100 billion cells. Now, nerve cells have got a, a sort of globular end at one end and a long, thin thing called an axon. And then it spreads out almost like the tentacles of an octopus and it touches other nerve cells. Those tentacles, well, there's a lot more than eight of them because it isn't like an octopus exactly. There are about 10 to 30,000 connections from each cell to other cells. Sometimes lots onto a single cell, sometimes lots branching out onto others. So you work out how many connections that makes. 100 billion times 30,000, well, work it out for yourself, yeah. Lots. The cells themselves are called neurons. If you're English, you call them neurons. If you're an American, you call it a neuron. The axon is the bit in the cell which is the, the sort of telegraph wire. What we need to talk about now is the thing called the synapse, and that is where you get the junction between one nerve cell and the second nerve cell. In between the two is a thing called the synaptic cleft. That's where, you know, you've got Dover on one side and Cali on the other side, and the Straits of Dover is the synaptic cleft. Across that synaptic cleft go transmitter chemicals released by the first cell. They jump across the cleft, hit the second cell, lock into some special receptors, and with a sort of lock and key mechanism, which is very specific, open up those receptors and allow certain things to happen. There are all sorts of different chemicals that are involved in this process. You don't really need to know the names of them, but just to give a flavour, here are some of the names. Noradrenaline, 5-HT, which is otherwise known as serotonin, acetylcholine, the endorphins, which are the body's own morphine, dopamine. Here is a cell. Here is the axon going on to another cell. Can you see here there's a bit from a previous cell that says over there, that's a synapse, that's a synapse as well. And in a moment you can see that there is a pulse coming down. It stimulates the synapse. The chemicals inside the synapse are released. They jump across the gap into the synaptic cleft hit the specific receptors, here's one about to do it. They go through and then they activate the nerve cell and it triggers it off. And the nerve cell triggers like a light switch. It's either on or off. And so this cell has been triggered and it in turn fires an electrical impulse right down here to the next cell. Now remember that this cell has got it's not just got one synapse here, it's got 10,000 or 30,000 of these synapses. So it's really connecting, it's firing off large quantities of chemicals. I want to get above anything else in your minds today the idea of this. You have a cell firing electrically. That's converted into a chemical signal which causes the next cell along to fire. So electrical signal, chemical signal, electrical signal. That's the basis of how we pass messages on the brain. In depression, the synapse, the chemicals, don't work as well. Now, I said that the cell would fire. Actually, what the cell does is a little bit of calculation. It works out how many impulses it's had and whether they are stimulatory impulses or whether they are inhibitory impulses. It does a quick sum total, calculates the result in its head and decides whether to fire or not fires or doesn't fire, and then the messages get passed on. And you may find that you only need a small percentage of the chemicals to be missing for the whole system not to work properly. In which case, you might get electrical signal, chemical signal, but it's smaller, nothing. And that's what depression is. That 
is what depression is. Just a chemical change in the brain. Why do you get that chemical change? Well, there are lots of different potential reasons. It could be that your body isn't producing the chemicals properly. Genetically, you were just one of those people that never produced enough of the chemicals. Or it could be that as a result of some of the things that have happened to you, your uh, body has been working those chemicals over time. So if you've had an anxiety, a stress, a problem, then you've been rushing around in, within the brain, using all those chemicals up. So you haven't got them for other things. So this is why when people are going for counselling, they can be helped with their depression. Because if it resolves problems, then the brain quietens down and then the messages can be passed on because the chemicals are available for other things. It also explains why antidepressants work, because what antidepressants do is stimulate the effects of those chemicals, or what remain of those chemicals, within the sufferer's brain.